Hello and welcome to another session on influence line diagram. In this video, you will learn about how to decide the shape of the influence line diagram for indeterminate structure using Mueller Breslau principle. In previous part, we have already studied the concept of influence line diagram and how to apply Mueller Breslau principle to draw ILD for some simple determinate structures. So in case you haven't seen the previous part, I will suggest you first watch that part so that you will understand this session in a better way. In previous part, we have seen that in case of moving load, the values of support reactions, bending moment, shear force, etc. goes on changing for various positions of the load. The influence of this moving load on various design parameters are studied using this influence line diagram. We have also studied that influence line diagram, it is a graph or curve that represent a function like a vertical reaction at a support, the shear force at a section, the bending moment at a section or support moment at interior support of a structure for various positions of unit load on span of the structure. So whenever the structure is subjected to moving load, sometimes it is important to know where the live load should be placed for producing the maximum effect of the function, like to get the maximum value of reactions at any support or shear force or bending moment. And hence, in that case, the qualitative influence line diagram are very useful to find out the span to be loaded for maximum effect. So in many practical applications, it is necessary to determine only the general shape of the influence lines, but not the numerical value of the ordinate. Such influence line diagram is known as qualitative influence line diagram. In qualitative influence line diagrams, we are not interested in the value of numerical value of the ordinate, but we want to see only shape of the influence line diagram. Such influence line diagram is called as qualitative influence line diagram. And an influence line diagram with numerical values of its ordinate is known as quantitative influence line diagram. So in this video, we are going to learn how to draw qualitative influence line diagram for indeterminate structure. To draw the qualitative influence line diagram, we are going to use concept of muller breslaus principle. This muller breslaus principle we have already discussed in previous video. Just to revise, we will see what are the steps of influence, uh, muller breslaus principle to draw influence line diagram. So in order to draw the influence line diagram for any function using muller breslau principle, what we do? First, we remove the ability of the beam to resist that function. Then we give the unit displacement in the direction of the function action. Then obtain the deflection curve due to unit displacement. So when you give the unit displacement, the whatever resultant deflection curve we get, due to unit displacement itself is the influence line diagram for that function at corresponding point. This is the muller breslau principle. Now we will apply this muller breslau principle to draw qualitative influence line diagram for indeterminate structure. Now consider these two span continuous beam. This is an indeterminate structure and suppose you want to draw influence line diagram for reaction at C using the concept of muller breslau principle. So what will be the procedure? The first step is remove the constraint. So we will remove the reaction at C and then we will apply certain force which will lift this end and because of this, this support deflect like this. So this deflected shape itself represent the influence line diagram for RC. This is what muller breslau principle. Now we will apply this muller breslau principle for a long span bridge. 
Now let us assume that this is a bridge structure which is subjected to moving load. Now suppose you want to design the column or pier at this support A. So you want to know what is the maximum reaction possible in this support. So this structure is subjected to moving load. Now we will see how to draw the qualitative influence line diagram using muller breslieu principle and what is the use of that qualitative influence line diagram. So to draw the influence line diagram for reaction at A, first of all, we have to remove the constraint. That means we have to remove that reaction. Then we have to apply unit deformation in the direction of this reaction. Because of this unit deformation, whatever deflected shape we get, that itself is the influence line diagram. That is what muller breslieu principle says. So if you provide the unit deformation in the direction of RA, this structure will deflect something like this because here they, this structure is free to rotate and therefore this structure will have the deflected shape like this. And therefore, by muller presley principle, if this ordinate is one, then this deflected shape itself represent the influence line diagram for RA. Now we will see what is the use of this diagram. Now suppose if you consider there is load acting, uh, this structure is subjected to uniformly distributed load throughout the span, on span A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E. Now we know that how we use this influence line diagram. If you want to calculate what is reaction at A due to given load, then the load multiplied by area gives you the reaction. For example, there is 10 kilonewton per meter load on span AB. Then the reaction at A will be this 10 multiplied by this area. We get reaction here. Suppose this structure is subjected to uniformly distributed load throughout the span. Then what will be the reaction here? It will be the load multiplied by this area. Now this is negative area. So this load multiplied by this area, this will be deducted from this. Then plus this load multiplied by this area minus this load multiplied by this area. That means when the structure is loaded completely, we will get less value of RA. Suppose you want to know what will be the maximum value of RA, then you will have to apply the load only on positive spans, the spans having positive ordinates. So if there is a load here on span AB and span CD, then we will get maximum value of RA. Otherwise, if you apply load at BC and DE, it will have negative effect. So to have maximum value of RA, we have to load this, we have to put the load only on span AB and CD. That is the use of this qualitative influence line diagram. Now suppose you want to know what will be the maximum uplifting in this uh, column. So in that case, if the load is on span BC, then there will not be any compressive force in this column. There will be tensile force and there will be lifting of this column. So if load is on BC and DE, there will be negative effect on this reaction. And therefore, to have maximum uplifting force in column A, we, we have to load this, we have to put the load on span BC and DE. Now, this is the use of qualitative influence line diagram to decide the position of moving load to get maximum value of the function. So, this is how we decide the position of load in case of RA. Similarly, we can uh, see the qualitative influence line diagram for other functions also. Now, suppose you want to know 
how will be the qualitative influence line diagram for reaction at b so in that case by mueller bresley principle first of all we have to remove that support then we have to lift this give the unit deformation so apply certain force which will give the unit deformation in the direction of that reaction so because of this this will have shape like this so this shape itself represent the influence line diagram for rb now let us see the continuous uh, beam having more spans so for this bridge just now we have seen how to draw qualitative influence line diagram for ra so similarly we can draw influence line diagram for rb for that you have to give unit deformation at b so this will deflect something like this so this shape is the shape of influence line diagram for rb so what is the use of this diagram so to have the maximum value of reaction at b we have to put the load on span ab and bc ab and bc because this is positive diagram and also on span de so if you put the load on ab bc and de then you will get maximum value of rb but if you put the load throughout the span on all the spans ab bc cd and de it will be load multiplied by the area so here there is negative effect and we will get less value of rb so to have maximum value of rb we have to put the load only on span ab bc and de and suppose you want to know what is the uplifting force on this reaction then you have to put the load on cd so you will get negative value of rb in that case now suppose you want to know what what is the qualitative influence line diagram for bending moment at any section or for support moment so how to draw the qualitative influence line diagram for bending moment so by muller bresley principle we know that to draw influence line diagram for any function first of all we have to remove the ability related to that function so we have to remove the ability to resist the bending moment at that section for example if you want to draw influence line diagram for bending moment at d then you have to remove the ability to resist the bending moment at d how we can remove the ability to resist the bending moment we can remove it by introducing hinge here as shown in the figure now in reaction case we have applied the unit deformation here you have to apply unit rotation so this is the moment force therefore you have to apply the unit rotation so when we give the unit rotation at point d then this beam will deflect something like this so this deflected shape itself is the influence line diagram so this is how we draw the qualitative influence line diagram for bending moment at any section in same way we can draw qualitative influence line diagram for bending moment at support for bending moment at support reaction sorry support moment so let us see how we can draw qualitative influence line diagram now suppose you want to draw qualitative influence line diagram for support moment at b so in that case we have to provide hinge here at b and then we have to remove the bending moment carrying capacity of that support by pro, uh, providing the hinge here and then you have to give the unit rotation in the direction of moment like this if you give the unit rotation the beam will deflect something like this as shown in the figure so this shape itself is the qualitative influence line diagram for moment at b support moment at b now what is the use of this you know that the support moment is negative suppose you want to know what will be the maximum where should be the position of the load to get maximum negative bending moment so for that you have to apply the load 
on span AB, BC, and DE. So if the load is placed on span AB, BC, and DE, we will get maximum value of moment, support moment at B. And suppose you want to know what will be the positive bending moment at B, then you have to put the load on span CD. So this is the use of this diagram, qualitative influence line diagram for MB. In same way, we can draw qualitative influence line diagram for bending moment at any section. So we can provide the hinge here and we can apply unit rotation at that point. So if you apply unit rotation at that point, the beam will deflect something like this. So this deflected shape is the qualitative influence line diagram. If you make this ordinate is equal to one, then this is the influence line diagram for bending moment at point G. Now, what is the use of this? Suppose you want to know what is the maximum sagging bending moment at G. Where should I put the load to get maximum sagging bending moment at G? Then we have to put the load on span BC and DE. Then we can get maximum sagging bending moment. Suppose you want to know what is the maximum hogging bending moment, then you have to put the load on span AB and span CD. Now suppose you want to draw influence line diagram, qualitative influence line diagram for shear force at any section. So first of all, we have to remove its shear carrying capacity by cutting this beam at that location. We cut this beam at this location and we apply equal and opposite forces in the direction of shear force. So when we apply equal and opposite forces in the direction of shear force, this beam will deflect something like this. So this is qualitative influence line diagram for shear force at G. We will understand the influence line diagram for shear force using muller bresselieu principle with the help of this simple example. Let us consider this is a simply supported beam and if you want to draw influence line diagram for shear force at C, then first we remove the shear carrying capacity at C by cutting this beam and providing rollers like this. And then we apply shear forces in the direct, we apply the deformations in the direction of shear forces. So when we lift this like this in the direction of shear forces, this will deflect something like this. And when this ordinate is one, then this diagram is called as influence line diagram for shear force. So this is the simple example of how to draw influence line diagram for shear force of simply supported beam. First we cut the beam, then we deform this, we apply the deformation in the direction of forces, shear force, equal and opposite forces are there. So because of this, this will deflect like this. So this shape itself is the influence line diagram for shear force at C. So same logic we can apply to continuous beam also. For indeterminate beam also, we can apply same logic. Cut the beam at that place and then apply the forces in the direction of shear force. So this will deflect something like this. So this is influence line diagram for shear force at G. Whereas this is influence line diagram for any section in between AB. So this is how we draw qualitative influence line diagram for shear force. So I think you must have understood the meaning of qualitative influence line diagram and what is the use of that qualitative influence line diagram. So qualitative influence line diagrams are used to decide the position of moving load to get the maximum value of that function. These are the sum of the examples of portal frame how we can draw the qualitative influence line diagram and where should be the load to get the maximum value of that function. I hope you will find this video useful. In next video, 
we will solve some numerical example on influence line diagram which is also called as quantitative influence line diagram so stay connected if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet then click on subscribe button and click on bell icon to get the notification of new videos when i upload on this channel so thank you for watching this video thank you very much